So like, okay, so the glitch, okay, for, for red letter day skip, the glitch that we use for red letter day skip, this is, this is Bill's big thrill, is basically where you make a prop float, and the prop basically gets special properties, and when Gordon touches it, he gets his own set of special properties. And, um, so I have the, have a hitbox command turned on, so like int underscore bbox player. I, we have to do developer one and then int bbox player like this to, uh, turn, uh, this hitbox on. What you can also do is you can just type int bbox and face the uh, object, and it'll also highlight it like that. And we can actually do that to see the hitbox of the tire here. So... You can see that I'm touching the I'm touching the APC tire right now. You see how it has those collision points right there? What you can do or how how this glitch starts is if I do that, as you can see, it still says it's touching it and it just floats away. I don't know exactly why it works this way. May maybe like the um maybe like the collision of like like physical collision and like the flag of it colliding or like the bounding box that sets the flag of it colliding is like slightly different or something probably a rounding error yeah something like that maybe it is like a sphere so maybe that's why but like the prop thinks Okay, so like, I think what happens here is the APC, what it's trying to do, it's trying to interact with the prop, but the prop hasn't, like, physically touched it yet. So it has no, like, th it has nothing it can really do to, like, push it around or, like, interact with it. So the only thing it does is, like, it just keeps moving in the direction it was going when it touches it. And this is where, this is where, like, the weirdness of how Havoc Engine works, which is, like, a bunch of high IQ stuff that, like, not a lot of people know about, because, you know, Havoc costs, like, $30,000 or whatever to license. But, like, I think there's, like, a tree of, like, how Collision works. And uh, when Gordon touches the prop, he also, you know, gains some properties because he's, like, a descendant in, like, the, the tree, like, the family tree or whatever of, like, the physics that's going on when it connects to the tire. And this does a ton of stuff to, like, just break you. So you have to hit the prop just the right way, which is like that. Also, this is where you go. You jump off the attic, come down here, make, make sure you skip over the guard and train station 03 in order to, you know, not take fall damage. I have my, my older tutorial went over that. And, um, so the idea is the skip is to abuse all these mechanics here. Let's, let's actually show, show off these mechanics before we actually, like, explain the skip itself. So, like, you have that, right? You jump into it, you start floating, but at the same time, you're, you, you have two hitboxes. Okay, this is, this is where it gets even, even more weird. So you have two hitboxes. One is the original Quake hitbox, you know, John Carmack, five head, you know, programming collision model from Quake, right? But then you have Valve. Valve comes along, they're like, oh yeah, we need, we need to put a physics engine. How do we combine John Carmack's work with, like, you know, Havoc? And the way they did that is they just made two hitboxes. And so what happens is, is there's, they check each other. They prioritize each other. So if you're not, like, anywhere, if you're not, like, touching a physics object or you're, like, a physics object, the, the hitbox that actually matters is the old hitbox, the uh, Quake hitbox. It's the one that lets you hit walls and such. But when I touch that prop there... The game, since that prop still thinks it's touching the APC, it also thinks I'm still touching the prop. And um, since it still thinks I'm touching the prop, the hitbox, the hitbox itself, the physics hitbox, takes over. Which is why, 
when I do this when I do this here, you'll see that it goes through walls. And when it goes back into thin air where it checks where you won't get stuck inside a wall, it will just teleport you to it like that. Which is also how quick clip works, which is something we do later in the run. Is uh, when you touch a physics object, the physics hitbox takes over, but it has no collision, so it just goes straight through. Just straight through uh, walls. Because the, the quake hitbox is what actually interacts with walls. Now, you have two hitboxes. One for crouching and one for standing. And what happens is, is if I, let's say I touch this prop crouched. Right now I'm touching it crouch, and if I release crouch, I change my collision state to like standing because my hitbox is bigger. And what that does is that updates the game so that like, you know, it ma basically makes the game think like, oh, we need to resize Gordon. We need to do a bunch of magical code wizardry to you know figure out how to interact with this prop and then it just like it just it just decides to stop it just decides like oh yeah i'm not touching the prop but if i go back to that collision it's like oh yeah i'm touching the prop but like it doesn't really know what to do because I, I think it just can't find the prop or something so it just stays in the air so like if i jump and like when it whenever you jump you actually crouch by the way like automatically that's how like the weird vaulting mechanic works the secret vaulting mechanic of half-life 2 so when you when you jump, it stays in the air, and if I hold crouch, it'll just stay there because I'm still in that collision state. And what I could do is, if I touch a physics object, you know, my quake hitbox will touch a physics object. It'll be like, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to run this calculation, this interaction with the physics hitbox. So what it does is like, you should be with your physics hitbox. Here you go. We go to your physics hitbox. So if I touch this prop here, it teleports me to it. Because, like, oh, you should be interacting it with it with that hitbox. And this happens every time you touch a prop, actually. Is if the uh, red hitbox touches a prop, it, the yellow hitbox takes over. But the yellow hitbox is just stuck because of the glitch. And what's actually kind of cool about the hitbox is um, the velocity from, like, when you make the hitbox is stored. So, like, if I do this, I, like, I go the direction that I jump in when I touch an object. Like that. There's a bunch of weirdness as well, which I'll explain in a second. Oh, yeah, but before, before we go further, I should probably explain. If you do this trick... If you do this trick and you save and load, your game will crash. Well, it'll it'll only crash after you do a te after you teleport to the physics object. The game will crash. Not exactly sure why, but yeah, just just keep that in mind. But another another mechanic of this is if you touch a prop directly to it, it sort of like reminds it that like, oh yeah, I should be moving. And it'll just keep going in the direction, or it'll start having the weird, like, physics of floating, of going in a straight line. So if I were to touch it like this, I start floating again and going through everything like that. With, if I touch it with another prop. I also have some other cool uh, features of this trick as well, which is actually kind of kind of useless, but sort of fun to know. So if I set this hitbox here, and I walk up a slope, it'll actually rise. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. There's actually a baby Red Letter Day skip strat, but I don't think it even saves time. But because like how how annoying it is. It also requires even a higher IQ. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, you can make it go as high as you want and just keep going down and up. But yeah. So, 
This trick actually works in the reverse if you go into the prop standing. So if I'm like standing, if I'm like standing, it will uh, create the box in the standing state. And if I crouch, it comes to me. But the problem with that is if I jump, if I jump, it resets because I crouch and it comes back to me. So when we do red letter day skip, we need a way to get back. So let's start explaining red letter day skip. So the idea of red letter day skip is there's two maps. You have this map. This is a train, D1 train station 04. And then the next map is D1 train station 05. And how map transitioning works is that there'll be areas of the map that sort of overlap in certain areas. I'm going to I'm going to kill this guy. Okay. He's a little annoying. Is the maps will overlap. And I can show this off. So uh so how how maps work is um when you um, go into a level change zone, there's a landmark associated with it. And that'll basically tell you, like, tell the game, like, where to spawn you when the map loads. It'll basically, like, d apply all the correct and offsets so that you appear in the next map in the exact same spot as the previous map. So it won't look like anything has changed. When in reality, you're in, like, like, let's say up here in the top right, you'll be in a completely different position, but the game will teleport you into that position seamlessly. That's what the landmark does. Which doesn't matter too much for this. Just know that the maps overlap. And I can demonstrate this overlap with this command. So if I do uh, change level 2 uh, D1 train station 05 and then I tell it what landmark to transition to which is like uh, D1 trains or train station I kind of forgot I uh, the exact one I need to do. 04... 04... 05, I think? That works. It's a miracle. Yeah, that's not it. I spawned in the wrong spot, so... So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's land landmark. Land... Mark. So if I do this in this specific area, you'll see that I'll appear inbounds on the next map. If I if I can get the correct land, oh, that, that, I messed that up. <laughs> I, I did the wrong thing. Okay. But yeah, we, we our goal our goal here is to basically come to this out of bounds area. Up here with the glitch so that we can set teleport points and we're our the idea is that we set one where the maps will overlap at and and give it velocity so that we have a place to land on the next map without soft locking so let's see let's see if i can remember the command here so landmark train station 04 maybe it's like that i think maybe Oh, I didn't put an O5. That's probably why. It, it's... Oh, God, I did it wrong again. Let me actually make a save here so I can load back. Okay. So, if I, if I put this command in properly, I should appear on the next map in the right spot. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, I'm right here. I wasn't quite in the right spot. I should be right here. But, yeah, that's the idea is you spawn right here. So, so I actually go into the right spot. Okay, so, like, over here. Yeah, like, I, I, it's, like, sort of in between these two buildings. So, if I do this, you'll see that I am here. And this is where you'll appear. This is our, this is our goal to appear at. It's, like, in this area here where we can move around. And the idea is that we want to give that hitbox... Remember that the hitbox stores velocity. So we want it to store velocity. So that we can basically come into the map over here and like sort of bounce off this slope and land here. So that, that 
so that we don't fall down here and effectively soft lock. Because if you're down here, there's no way to get up. You can also land up here and down here as well. But yeah. So now I've gone over, like, how this works. So here, here's the command, by the way. Like, pause the video. I might, like, I might upload this to the YouTube. Because people ask for it. So, yeah. You can pause the video. And here's the command to, like, transition the level. Like, with the same parameters as, uh, like, going through a level load. So that you can actually see see where these two maps that will overlap at. So you can so you can actually you can use this command right here to actually practice where you need to put your point your teleportation point at. Like to put your hitbox. It needs to be somewhere where if I do this, it'll appear it'll appear in the next level. See so right like right here's in the wall, so it needs to be a little bit this way. So let's actually go over the uh, the actual skip itself, like how how we set all this stuff up in order to do this warp. So first of all, if we activate the glitch, we jump to the prop. We jump into the prop to get to where we need to go. It's as it's as soon, soon as you jump. That's what that's when it's stored, because when you're in in the crouch when you jump. When you jump, it uh, is right when the hitbox is created. What crouching does, just make sure it doesn't come back to you. So, like, when you're out of bounds up there, it's whenever you jump. Like, the last point where you do a standing jump is where your hitbox needs to be. But we'll, we'll come, to, come to that in a second. So, once you make it up here, you can, uh, if... If you do like some wonky thing, you land up here. You're like as lo as long as you have the option, like you can land up here, you can land up here, you can land anywhere over here. Just like doing this. As lo as long as long as you have the ability to get in here, then you're fine. You can continue the skip. And r another reminder: you can't make any saves when you do this, or the game will crash. Which is very unfortunate, but whatever. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down here. You're gonna spam E on these two guys. And just hold W, which is just the fastest way to make them hit you. And the reason why we have to do this at all is just because like there's no way to get to the end of the level, like to reach the level transition without going through this cutscene. But this cut, we used to actually skip this cutscene. But you know, skipping Red Letter Day is a lot better than skipping this cutscene. All right, now that we've done that, we need to get to that out of bounds area. So what we're going to utilize for that is remember, touching your hitbox will um, make you start floating and go through walls again. So we're actually going to do that to get up there. And there's a pretty pretty simple setup for this. Is like you know, after I like wake up, I just come back here into this corner, and I just look like I just look at like this thing, and then I just hold W and just jump before I hit the wall. And again, make, make sure you jump before you hit the wall or otherwise it won't have the right velocity. This way, and now, it's actually important how you touch the uh, hitbox here. So I recommend practicing with uh, the hitbox is turned on. Is because if you don't touch it the right way, you'll just get stuck. You'll just get stuck or maybe float the wrong way. So the what you want to do is you want to touch it on like the opposite side of the direction you're heading. So you want to you want to touch it either on this face of the cube or this face of the cube. You don't want to really touch it anywhere else. You might be able to touch it on the bottom, but I think that that might be inconsistent. So you mainly just want to touch it on those two faces. So come back over here, you grab this piece of wood and you touch it like that. And make sure you just keep holding crouch. Like I said, you, you uncrouch to get out of the floaty state. And you're gonna come up here and land here. The hitbox on this is actually a little bit deceiving, so if I move over to the right a bit, you will uh, fall. 
And here, here's a, here's another thing too. When when you go through that Alex cutscene, you start taking damage again. So before that, if you skip the garden and train station 03, you you uh, don't take any damage. Okay, so this right here, this movement right here. There's uh, plenty of different ways to do this. The mo like, the most consistent, like honestly, the hard way is the most consistent way if you practice it. Like, not gonna lie. So, like, there's plenty of different ways to set this point, but just know that that area I showed with this command here, you want your hitbox to be set within the zone where these two levels will transition and you'll be in bounds. And you want that speed to be above like 15, like around 1500 or above. And also heading towards, like not heading into like the walls on the next map. So like heading into that roof. There's plenty, there's a bunch of different movements for this. Like I said, here, here is the, uh, here's the way that I do it is I just run forward ASH. And then after I fall off, I do three jumps. And on the third, after the third jump is when I crouch. And after I do that, I also turn my mouse slightly to like keep some speed after hitting the wall and then use that to rebound back. So it's uh, what the heck? That was interesting. Uh, I don't know why backspace closed my console, but okay. Um, so you need to know the areas here where you can actually make it back. So let me actually show that off here before we continue. Let me uh, actually uh, give myself a ton of HP here. So in order to get back, this is, this is what makes this trick so hard, is like having the right amount of speed to go into the next level and to make it back into this window here. So. This clip brush here is only for NPCs. You can actually go through it. There is a quick little notice here. Is that this window isn't broken until this cutscene plays. That's a, that's another little thing. And you also have to keep in mind as well. If you're practicing. So you have to get to a point to where you can get back. And the only places you can really do that is to land on top of this big invisible wall here. Which you can kind of see where it is if you, uh... So basically, like, this vent, this vent all the way, like, you know, over here. Or, like, not quite over there. Like, th this vent, to, like, to the right side of this thing is where you can actually know where the invisible wall is. Like, the side of the vent to, like, over there. This is where you should probably aim for. If you have a lot of speed, you can also just aim for over here or even up here. Any of that's fine, as long as you can get back into the window. So if you land here, you fall down in this railing. Don't fall down on the road because you can't get back up on the railing while holding crouch. So you fall down here, and then you just jump into the window like that. Requires, requires a little air strafing, which is a pretty hard concept, I know. But yeah, let's, let's go over that movement again. So... Uh, So I do some hops here, three jumps there, and then I transition my speed over here to land on the clip brush. Apparently the hurt me command didn't do anything. I'll just, I'll just give HP next time. You might want to have a bind for speeding up this Alex part because it's going to be pretty annoying when you grind this. So just bind a key to SV cheats one and host time skills. It's actually what I do for... Uh, two for like speeding up the end of the game and here's the bind to turn it off so we can just do that to practice this like that just turn SV sheets back on I guess I'll just give myself health kits for this but yeah many different ways to do this movement up here So 
So, ASH on top. Three hops. I had to delay one there, otherwise I was going to be too fast. I actually didn't get it. Alright, let me just... Oh, you know what? You know what I could do? I can just do this to, like, show the point. I wasn't crouched. I could just do this just to activate the glitch just to show off the point where it needs to be. So... Yeah, and I'll stay invincible. That's actually good. Okay. So, like... Yeah. 1500 speed in the right spot where the levels will transition. In the right place. That might have been too far back, actually, because I wasn't fast enough. I wasn't fast enough either. Like I said, 1500 speed. There we go. That worked. And then I turn around like that, and then I land on the clip brush. And if you're a true Chad, you can uh, slow down. You can slow down and AFH into the window up there. Like that. Like I said, when I... Like, I didn't go through the Alex cutscene, so this window is... Uh, Solid. I can't. I can't go through it. All right. So th that that this is the setup that I use. Mal Malta also does this setup, but he does ABHs, which I don't like doing. I actually got it there. Why don't I show this in the tutorial in the first place? Because it's a very long explanation. I, I wanted I wanted to make like a highly edited video so that it wouldn't be that long. Like one that has like an actual like written script and like diagrams and stuff. Because as you can see, this is taking quite a long time to make this. Another strat you can do is uh, requires a toggle duck bind. So uh, bind X to toggle duck. Like that. And this is the setup I recommend doing. This is a setup I also found for this. Is you, come, you come up here, it doesn't have to be that precise, is you just, uh, you jump backwards and you do three jumps, and on the third jump you do your toggle duck. Just make sure you have the right amount of speed. And, uh, I actually haven't done it in a while, so I don't really remember it. But yeah, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, like that. That's the setup. And what you kind of do is you look kind of away because, like, on the next map, that like roof that we slope off of is actually pretty long. You have a lot of extra room for it to land on it. So what you can do is you can uh, do that to get into this wall. Right there, I also, uh, I toggle duck like on my first jump and then just turned in, but you can wait for a couple of jumps before you do the toggle duck jump. Like I said, there's a, there's a lot of ways you can just do this. But if you want like an actual like setup, that's, there it is right there. Explain how toggle ducking makes you stand. It's because, uh, toggle ducking has a mechanic. If you're crouched and you jump, it'll, it'll uncrouch you and jump at the same time. And what that'll do is that'll, like, do a perfect uncrouch jump for you without losing speed. Which is the idea of toggle duck jumps. But yeah. One... Okay. I, I missed time that first top. One, two, three. One, two, three. So on the third jump, you press your toggle duck bind. Release crouch, and then just turn. And go this way. And you can keep your speed to go into this corner. That, that should get you in the right spot. I guess I could go ahead and tell you, like, the the sort of setup I look for. For, like, like a somewhat visual setup for uh, where the level overlaps. So, you see this, like, catwalk here? That's, like, if your hitbox is anywhere between, like, this, like, wall, this, like, textured wall here and this catwalk, it should be the, it should be within the area, like, 
within the area like forwards and backwards like where for, for like where your velocity is going but for left and right i just sort of aim for like to the left of this building pretty much but not you know too far to the left but more like somewhere between like maybe like here and here like like i said just 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 use the command just 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 use the command to sort of feel it feel it out where it is it's like stand still and do it, and that's where the, you need to place your hitbox. But now I need to show how you get back with this setup. One, two, three, toggle duck, one, two, three. And then I keep my speed into this corner here. So this is an invisible corner here. And what you can actually do here is there's a couple of ways to get back from this. A couple setups. So there's actually a mechanic where if you hold a strafe key against the wall you'll build speed it's actually a air strafe mechanic that a lot of, not a lot of people know about that's in source even people who know source quite a bit don't know that this mechanic exists if you hold a sh like a singular strafe key and jump you'll excel along the wall so uh i forget the exact value for this i think it's like 95 i think yeah, ni like negative 95. As you can see, I'm accelerating while I'm just holding the strafe key. And once I start accelerating, I just turn like that. And that should get me over here. So once you're at, like, I don't know. This, this setup, I haven't really messed with it too much, so. I get, yeah, I guess once you're over 1,000 speed, then turn. I didn't, I didn't turn hard enough. I probably would have landed here, which would have been fine. And that's a, that's a valid way to get back after you, after you set that point. You, you, like, you come into this corner. That's how I got, kind of got lucky. I don't, I don't think I, you'd always get like an extra jump there. The negative 95 is only relative to this wall here. Yeah, you maybe turn a little bit earlier as well. Like 800 speed. Switch to ASH after a few jumps? You could, but that might be... You might not have enough reaction time for that. Like I said, there's a, like, there's a lot of experimenting that can be done with this. Yeah, you can switch to ASH if you want. You can just do like that. Yeah, there there is there is one for this that uses ASH instead, but you don't build as as much speed as fast, so it can be less consistent. And the setup I use for for that is I look at the t like I, if you see my crosshair, I look at the top left corner of this thing, and then just hold a A and S, and it'll start me into an ASH like that. Problem is if you get like a mistime top, it won't always work and you won't always have enough speed for it the the a the abh one i think can be more consistent but you can't really see where you're going that that could have worked if i actually did see where i was going because i could have landed on the uh invisible wall there But yeah, there you go. Now, there's a couple other movement setups you can do for this. But like I said, this is this is the one I find the most consistent for like newer players is that one with the toggle duck. But that requires a toggle duck, which is pretty new concept, like a new movement concept that not that a lot of people don't know of, that don't use M Malta, the world record holder doesn't even doesn't even doesn't even know how toggle duck even works cuz he doesn't use it. Shout out to Malta. Where you bounce at the toggle deck setup? What do you mean? Bounce off the wall. Oh, bounce off the wall to go back. Yeah, you can. You can also. 
You can also do the same thing where, like, where I hopped along here. You can also do that to turn back as well, but... It's a bit tighter of a window than doing it from up here. It's actually much easier to do it from doing it up there. Whoop, I messed it up. <laughs> so after after you do your third your third hop, one, two, three, toggle duck, one, two, three. Yeah, it's 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 a bit harder to keep speed. I kind I kept like two hundred speed, which is enough to build which was enough to build uh, some hop speed. If you want to be a true Chad, though, what you can do is you can just start from, like, anywhere. You can, like, just B-hop backwards. And w once you get enough speed, you'll start building ABH velocity, and you can do that to get back. But that's for Chads only, pretty much. But yeah, this is the only two setups I really recommend. There is an older setup that was more inconsistent, which is, like, you come over here to, like where this invisible wall ends and you kind of walk forward here and you just go a little bit extra and then you just like, you look like right here. Yeah, this old setup was inconsistent because if you miss time a hop, it literally just didn't work. Half the time. So I'm not even going to talk about that, but yeah. It was something like that. Alright, let's actually go over here. So that's, that's the movement portion. So, like I said, you want your hitbox to be set with above 1500 speed in in that window like you know fo forwards and backwards of like where your velocity is heading like from this like r from this like catwalk to like this texture here and like to the left of it like a bit to the left of this building a bit so like you want to be you want to be set like in this general area but you know with 1500 speed onto it and you know it has to be a standing hop. Rem reminder, it has to be a standing hop, or otherwise the point will not be set. I don't swear on my streams. I did it once by accident because that's like sp I spilled water next to my computer. <laughs> but yeah, there you go, that works. I, I was playing VR, right? I went to, like, go set my controller down on my desk. I was, like, trying very hard to, like, look under the headset. <laughs> then, I, then I knocked over a cup of water. But, yeah. That's that. Uh, it's, just, it's just that, like... Okay, like... Oh yeah, that, this one. This is the one that has collision. I I don't swear because I just like. I was just raised not to swear a lot. My my parents never swore or anything, so. All right, so let's actually go over the last part of the skip. The reason why we're here. The actual teleportation to the next map to skip Red Letter Day. So let's, let's, let's get this first try so I don't have to go through this again. No. So you get up here doing that. at your point. Uh, okay, got it. That was a little tight. You jump back. You jump back through the window. You don't. You don't be like me and like slightly tap the windowsill. You know, like the the side of the window. <laughs> don't don't be like me. So now we gotta do it again. You want you to demonstrate? Yeah. Trash. 
That might not have worked because my last jump was a li might have hit the wall, which would kill all my speed. But this should be enough to at least demonstrate like where I should set up the pallet and how to pause. There's a, sm there's a small chance I got it though, but I think I hit the wall then jump. So this probably didn't work, but I can at least show off the where you need to set up the pallet. So. Be sure not to let Alex touch you when she starts walking. You can touch you can touch her all you want when she's standing still, but don't 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 let her touch you when like you know when she starts walking. So the setup for this is uh, if you look at the top right of the screen, like j just above where I have like my current song that's not playing because I don't want to get copyrighted on YouTube, you know. Uh, the angles, the ang, the uh, two, the first two. You want your left value to be like lower negative three, so like under like negative three point five, and you and your right value just needs to be like like around like negative one eighty, but like a little bit to the left. And the reason why it doesn't have to be exactly one eighty, or like you kind you kind of want it to be a little bit further off as well. So that you can actually do it, because that's actually for like some strats here. So you're just gonna make your way forward, and then on the position at the top, at the top right, the top left number, which is your position, you want that to be seven nine three six point zero four through like seven nine three six point zero eight. And how I set it up that precise is, uh, what I do is, is I get kind of close. Let's say I'm right here, 7935 and not 7936, is I just press D against the wall while looking slightly away from it, which will pull me forward a little bit very slowly. And that's how I can set it up precisely, like that. And then I just drop it. I also re-grab it too, because sometimes it can bounce, which will mess it up. And set it down again, and then just walk forward and do it. Okay, we got it. Alrighty. And if you did it right, okay, this is this is also important. What I did there on the loading screen is on like the latter half of the loading screen is I pressed the pause key. And this is just so that you can make a save and have reaction time. Because it could happen really fast. This time I might not even got it. No, I got it. Kind of. Because you gotta like strafe left a bit. This actually isn't that great of a setup that I got here. I might be able to like land on top of this part, actually. Okay. <laughs> if you if you actually okay, if you actually didn't land on the clip brush and you like landed on like the roof or whatever, you probably won't die here. Actually. But yeah. Oh there we go. I somehow lived there. Oh I lived by standing, okay. You can land you can land on this roof, but I actually aim for landing, like coming in like this and landing on this slope. It's, it's invisible, but you can see the outline of it here, of the slope. It actually extends all the way to right here. This is what I aim for, is hitting that. You didn't have a pause key. Yeah, make sure you bind a key to pause, just like that. Just And do it, like, on the, like I said, the latter half of the loading screen. Like, a little bit before it ends. What I, what I recommend is you have your timer open. The instant it starts moving, you press it. But yeah. You either land right here without dying and, like, jump across like that. Or slope up like this. And then you just come down here. Walk over here. And you go down. And here's your level change trigger. And you've skipped Red Letter Day. And that's how it works, like that. And then you just save, delete, and you have it, and you're done. <laughs> you did it. Success. But yeah, n normally, normally the setup I like to do is to aim for this, not land up here. But yeah, if you want to be a true Chad, you can kind of keep speed and like <laughs> try try and go fast like that. Pretty, pretty complex skip, but 
it saves so much time and it skips a very boring cutscene <laughs> that takes forever. And that's yeah. Avo avoid, avoid fall damage after the Alex cutscene. I guess I can quickly quickly go over that while we're here. So if you if you don't go for this strat here where you do this to set the point, what you can do to take less fall damage is when you get up here is just crouch and then stand, which will take very little fall damage, if at all. It might not even take fall damage. It might just make the noise but not take any damage. And then you do the setup here. So that's that's how you avoid some fall damage. And to avoid even more fall damage, like the what takes the most of your damage is like coming from like over here and is and landing on the clip brush here. That takes a lot of the damage is landing from up here onto the clip brush. Let's see if I can demonstrate. Yeah, la landing on the clip brush like that. That's what deals the most damage to you. That if if you get a lot of speed and you land like up here, you you'll you'll you can basically land you can land where I did without dying like every time and be fine. If you land up here on the roof. And uh is there is there anything else I'm missing about Rather Today Skip that I should tell the babies? I, th I think I've covered everything. I've covered the mechanics of BBT. I've covered how the levels overlap. I've covered... Uh... Yeah, I, th I think that's everything. Yeah, okay. So when you're floating up here, like you just you just got to make sure you release scratch. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, that's that's another thing too is um oh, wrong save. Okay, let me just like Dr. Freeman, I You can actually you can you can actually like pay attention and see if you make it or not. If you when you do this, like sometimes you might like um, the glitch didn't stay, but like when you t when you go up here, you might go too far to the right. Like you might go up here and you might not be able to actually land up there. So you gotta watch out for that. And if if that happens, you get you have to reset, which is unfortunate. Or maybe you can try and be a strafe guide and like strafe onto it, you know, like that <laughs> or something. But yeah. It's basically a re like you have to restart the whole trick. Oh, I didn't really, I didn't really show, I didn't really showcase the the best way of getting Bill's big thrill. So like, how how the be the easiest way to get Bill's big thrill is, um, well, first of all, you can have this to sort of look at the hitbox itself. Is uh, basically just look for. Okay, well, we'll turn it off because actually just kind of throws it off actually. So the, the hitbox is actually extends way past the tire like that. As you can see, the props going around it like that. What you want to do is you just want to find it, like when it starts like hitting it like that, and then just like move to the right, and then make a save, test it, see if it works. If not, like ma make a save, test it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, load back, adjust, save, and test. If it goes slow like that, just go backwards and forwards, and it should work like that. But just keep just keep rinsing and repeating, like adjusting, like loading the save and adjusting until you get it. And uh, yeah, there you go. And as far as far as jumping into the prop, I I aim for when it like I walk into this wall and I aim for when it passes the 
the line on the the uh, line on the road. The lane marking. Like that. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's everything to do with the skip. In detail, even even the intricacies of uh, Bill's Big Thrill itself. I don't know how long this video is. It's probably like thirty, like over thirty minutes. 